you're digging on a, a fantastic voyage with our ancestor, Hawashua Joshua. And it feels good to know where we're going and know who got us there. You know what I'm saying? You know, we can't you know, be such in a rush to get somewhere that we forget how we even got here. You know what I'm saying? We talk promised land a lot. We talk Kalelu's. So we're going to talk promised land. We need to talk Joshua, my not? As much as they big up their fake Joshua, we need to big up our real Joshua, you know what I'm saying? You know, just in true honors, man. Giving that true Aha, that true honor for being, you know, the vessel that Joshua is. Now, Joshua's spoken about in different facets, man. Whether we're talking the, the Bible, the scripture, whether we're talking about, you know what I'm saying, uh, Noble Drew Ali, you know, speaking on Joshua the robber, you know, I mean, all these tribes are claiming the existence of Joshua as a reality, even um, into the Aztec or the uh, Papa Vu version of the Kitsukaol, am I not? This Kitsukaol flow, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, these are powerful priests and kings, rulers of their, you know what I'm saying, of their tribe rocking, you know, right here in the Americas, man. And we're talking about the Amaro Khan. You dig it? My Nagas. Because again, that's what we do it for. And you know, every so often we're gonna have to do a checkpoint and just remind all the Nagas in the world that we're doing it for the Nagas. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't have nothing. Just look around. We don't. Nagas ain't got nothing. You know what I mean? Nagas ain't got the sports and entertainment world. You know what I'm saying? You know, they ain't got that. You know what I mean? Nah. Nagas ain't got, you know, uh, their kingdoms and their principalities, man. You know, they ain't got their goods. They ain't got their scepters, man. Nagas ain't got their land. So we just ask, you know, where's the land for the Naga? Like, where's our exclusive flow? You know, doesn't it make sense that we have an exclusive separated flow? Before it gets all, you know what I'm saying, connected with this, this, that, and the other, you know, doesn't it make sense that these, that this nation of people <laughs> have their own flow, have their own land, have their own country, countries? Because you're talking about Preston John, the emperor of the three Indians, man. So King David was ruling over three countries. Now, either that's bull. You know, either it's, you know, some type of make-believe. But I think the real historians and the real, uh, you know, knowledge knowers, they know they can't, they can't anchor away from King David as being fiction. Not if they have Genghis Khan as reality, you know what I'm saying? And if Genghis Khan is reality, Preston John, Priest Khan is reality. And we're just talking priest kings when we talk Joshua. We're talking priest kings when we talk Moshe. So let's talk Moshe. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Shabbat Shalom. Baruch Pesach, man. We are popping off, man. You know what I'm saying? Clan Andrews is popping off. Our Baruch Pesach tonight, man. And Ahab to everyone who popped it off last week. We was with y'all there. And you know what I'm saying? Hey, double up with us, man. Let's go, man. Keep it going. You know, keep this new year going. Keep this, you know, harvest season going. Knowing that a while, you know, has passed over you with that plague, man. You ain't getting touched by this plague. <laughs> Make believe, real believe, you ain't getting touched by nothing. A while it's passing over Israel, you know what I'm saying? We waking up. No more Ruach Tarde Ma, man. We waking up. Popping off with five eyes, my let go. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're doing, man. So, you know, we remember our exodus to know that, you know, we have a mixed multitude. We get it, you know what I'm saying? But they don't have um, a lack of vision, a lack of focus as to who they are. You know, you can have a mixed multitude in order, you know. The Naga can be the Naga and have a whole land called Naga 
and still have other tribes rocking, you know, with them that understand and understand who they are, that aren't trying to take that away from, them, you know what I'm saying? That's Hijack City, you know, call it what it is, you know. To tell me Nagas can't have Naga there, you know. The Americas, my not. So, let's look, you know, let's let's dig on this journey with Joshua. You know, we're going to journey from Deuteronomy 34 to Joshua, you know, many different things. And just flow into what we're talking about when we say our land for the Naga. That the Navi is the sons and daughters of Eber, the Eberu. That these are the originals. And there's just no way of going back to that in any modern day form. You know, this is something that you have to, you know, this is a pop off, you know, a pop off session. <laughs> you have to fall back and let these Nagas pop off. We having a pop off session. We feel it. You feel this. This is something that you're here for. This is something that this is the most exciting thing that's happening in the entire on the entire earth plane. Right here, my Naga. Right here with you. Right now. Right now. This moment right now. This moment we got together. This is the most exciting thing. This is what they're paying attention to. We having a pop-off session, man. Wow. Why well, I said, man, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make they wise men look like fools, man. Cause you thought you needed all these things to prove all this stuff. When you just had to be in the flow, you just got to, had to get that vibration, man. You just had to know. The KTC, keep the code. Once you start popping off, you back in code. It don't matter if you this or that at this point right now, you in the code. You rocking with wow. the realest. You know? It ain't even about not wanting to be united with all these people. But you got to let the Naga, you know what I'm saying, reassemble, man. We've been splattered apart. You got to let these, this tribe of folk come back together, my Naga. And can't get in the way of that. You got to support that. You got to say, I support the unity of, this, of the Naga. Before you just jump to be, you know, I'm, I'm a part of it. Like, yeah, yeah, you are, but you're here to support to make sure we come back together. Leave it up to you. We'll never come back together. We'll just have a piece of you in us, right? <laughs> Instead of letting us come back together fully and then be able to embrace you, we can embrace, you know, all, all whoever, you know what I'm saying? But what we can't embrace is stumbling blocks. We, when we got a stumbling block, then it's, you know what I'm saying, a code issue. So we're back in code, man. This is the Tanakh only session. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to go back and forth with the Torah and the Tanakh only sessions. If I'm mostly the Torah, it'll be Torah. Torah only session. If it's got a lot of Tanakh in it, it's going to be Tanakh. <laughs> Either way, man, we talking about the scripts. I'm reading some Joshua and some Deuteronomy, man. So, you know, it's all the same thing. Let's, let's pop off. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And Hawaz showed him all the land, even Gilead, as far as Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah, Judah, as far as the Hinder Sea and the south, and the plain, even the valley of Jericho, the city of the palm trees, as far as Zohor. And Hawa said unto him, This is the land which I swore unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto your seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of Hawa, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of Hawa.
you know, when you're talking about Noah having ham, shim, and yay pot, they all had to go to a certain lot. It was all by order. When it comes to, you know, the seeds of Abraham, they all have a certain lot, you know, by order. Uh, Moshe's, you know, being able to see the lot of these particular tribes, these 12 tribes, you know, by order, he's able to, you know, get a glimpse of the direction and the boundaries, you know, the boundaries, because, you know, every tribe has boundaries, man, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, a, you know, you're in a relationship with somebody that's hella possessive, <laughs> And they won't let you have any boundaries, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, can I just get some some time, you know, to process? Oh, okay, okay. I get it, man. You don't want to talk right now. You don't want to talk, man. It seems like every time you don't want to talk to me. Like, man, it ain't about talking to you. I'm just, I just need this, this space, this separation, you know what I mean? That's all we saying as a tribe. We ain't saying we hate nobody. But, hey, we've been victimized so much, so... So, so the hell what if we said we hate everybody? I mean, we do have every right at this point to basically pop off just like that. And nobody can say nothing about it. So the fact that we ain't saying that, and we just saying, can we just have some space to operate? Can we, can we come together and be a whole nation of people again? Put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And with that comes your land, my nagi. And oath and in order in your inheritance with Hawa. So we say, yeah, we realize all the history, you know, everything we, we've learned has been you know, upside down, left, right, and spinning on the ball. So we come home knowing that the children of the promised land have never left <laughs> The promised land, you know what I'm saying? They've been made slaves on their own land. We've been made slaves on our own land. The so-called aboriginals, the originals, have been made slaves on their own land. And then we pop off in realization of that and we say, nope, not so fast. You can't have your own land without having us. Then we see what time it is. We ain't got no time for this play. Play's the fourth quarter, man. Fourth wave. We just popping off. And they just now tuning in. So Moses sees this land. Let's go. Verse 5, Deuteronomy 34. So Moses, the servant of Hawa, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of Hawa. And he was buried in the valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Pure, and no man knows of his sepsu unto this day. <laughs> We've been talking about Moab, Utah, uh, for years and years now. Seems to be a lot around this Moab, Utah, man. And Moses was 120 years old when he died, and his eye was not dim nor his natural force abated. We talked about this word abated. What does it mean, man? I mean, it means taken away, re removed, right? So Moses' life force was never re removed. His natural force was never taken away. And he's buried in some mountain, either in Moab, the Middle East somewhere, or Moab right here in Utah, Arizona, you know, all this right here, right? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to by default go the other way than where the hijack wants, wants, me, wants me to go. The hijack says Egypt's over there. By default, I'm going to start here. You know what I'm saying? By default, I'm just going to reverse. I found throughout the years that this works a lot better to get to the truth, man. So I'm going to go with... Moab and Utah, <laughs> that's somewhere connected with that, 
is the body of Moshe, who still has his life force. I know it sounds like sci-fi, right? But that's what it says. Or you have somewhere in the Middle East where Moses still got his life force. Either way, Moses is chilling. Again, what does it say? Deuteronomy 34. Verse 8, and the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Well, let's go back to verse 7. And Moses was 120 years old when he died, and his eye was not dim. Wow. What does that mean? And his natural force, nor was his natural force abated or removed. All right, man, y'all tell me. You know, holla at me. I'm chilling in the drop, drop chatter. Chat to chat, chat. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and the mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit wow. of wisdom. Wait. Why? We know that Joshua was rocking side by side. Now, some sources say, you know, pretty much that. Joshua is the nephew of Moses because uh, Joshua is the son of Miriam, according to some Quran text we got. So uh, I think that was in that thousand dollar book, Medieval History or Empire of the Israelites. It was a source out of there, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a possibility, you know, that Joshua is Moses' nephew. So, you know, what happens as Moses is. You know, so-called dying because his life force ain't going nowhere. But, you know, you know, let's say he's passing on, you know. <laughs> All right. Verse 9. Uh, Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him. So Moses, I told y'all it's going to sound like some sci-fi stuff, man. It's going gonna, it's gonna to sound real sci-fi around here, man. You got Moses still with his natural life force in Moab, Utah, you know. <laughs> and then you got, uh, what else? Uh, Moses, oh, he lays his hands, passes his magic to Joshua. Joshua pops off now. He says he's full of that Ruach. He's popping off, my nigga. That dragon flow. Now, this is the Joshua they duplicated, man. Love to Yosef to real for the brilliant work he does every week. I mean, <laughs> he's on a roll, man. I don't think he's missed any show at all in the fourth wave, man. I think I don't, he's on show 1,000. He's on show 1,001 right now. My bro's popping off. I really appreciate your dedication, my noggin. And all, all my noggins in the Ether Squad are mad, you know, super dedicated, man. I say mad dedicated, but you ain't mad. You ain't mad. You super dedicated, man. And I appreciate everybody, man. And yeah, yourself, man, be popping off, you know, back in that Caesar's Messiah with these phantom duplications, man. But check it. So this Joshua, this is why he's popping off, man. Because he has that Ruach of Moses. So when I talk priest king, this is a priest and a king. Moses was the king of Cush, according to the book of Yashar of Jashin. For 40 years, king of Cush. What was he doing for 40 years? He was on the front lines fighting in the Cushite wars. <laughs> and then after all that, he gets thrown into a dungeon for 10 years because he uh, gets an honorable discharge out of the Cushite army. Because uh, he wouldn't sleep with the woman they wanted him to arrange for him to sleep with to be his queen. And she said he never sleeps with me because he had a, you know, a law saying, you know, he can't be with this particular, uh, you know, tribe of woman. Right. So he didn't sleep with her. So then she wanted to go to war with him or something. But then they decided just to give him an honorable discharge. So they gave him an honorable discharge. Then he runs into Reuel or, or a Jethro. Kind of like they say in this story, but the book of Jasher is way different, man. Because, you know, by this time, Moses is like in his 60s or something. You know what I'm saying? 
And he runs into Jasher. Jasher thinks he's running away from the Kushites like he abandoned it. So he throws him in a dungeon. So he wasn't all cool and loving on Moses. He left him to die. The only reason why he survived is that Zipporah, his future queen, she kept him alive. For 10 years, she held him down. And it said nobody checked for him. So nobody was checking for Moses, man. None of the tribe was checking for Moshe. He fought in the Kushite Wars for 40 years. <laughs> Thrown in jail for 10 years in the dungeon. Left for dead. His queen holds him down for 10 years, man. No other Israelites, no Benjamites, no Neph. Nobody's checking on Moses. He gets out, gets inspired by Hawa to save the children of Israel, man. <laughs> it pops it off. That's the kind of, you know, priest king we're talking about. You know, he's, he's a priest and king. Joshua, the same thing. Now, we know this all happened recently. This is all happening after the 1000s and 1100s and right around that pocket, you know what I'm saying? Uh, at least, you know, I'm just, that's as far back as I could push it, you know what I'm saying, based on the recon. You know what I mean? So by the time that's happening, you don't have no time for no Jesus, no JC. You know what I'm saying? All that all that Roman history and stuff they write in. You see what they did with that extra 1,000 years that they gave to you. They added 1,000 years to all indigenous people on all indigenous lands at least. They put you in at least three major chronological time shifts, man. They push you back as far as 1,800 years or even more. And when they push you back, then they got a whole blank slate to paint. And they put it there, a fake Joshua, man. And, and they gave you a new a new tune. Your ancient love song was no more. Now you got a new tune. Now you shuckling and jiving. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Why are you praising him? What prophet says praise me? All praise goes to Hawa. Directly. Since when did you stop connecting directly, praising Hawa directly? Come home, my nuggets, man. It's the fourth wave. Could have been caught this way. Don't let nothing get in the way of you catching this way. No part of this truth. Because if I'm telling it to you, man, it's hashtag facts, man. It's all happening. We in a frequency here, man. You can't, you know, it's only so far you can run. You know what I'm saying? The, <laughs> the truth got you surrounded. You know what I'm saying? And this ain't nothing we got to prove in surrounding you. You don't get it by now, you're going to get it. Because that wall is going to, you know what I'm saying, creep up to your door. Your, your doorway, man. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get that mem sauce, man. <laughs> man, Moshe laid his hands on Joshua, right? So I just want you to know why Joshua's popping off. Moses laid his hands on him. And the children of Israel listened to him and did as Hawah commanded Moses. And there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses. And Hawah, whom Hawah knew face to face. All right. You're talking about anointed Prestus, man. And when you start combining that David Moses flow, you kind of run into the Prester John flow. You know what I'm saying? It appears like Prester John is a take on Moses and a take on David. Almost like they split the story up and put the King David over here and put the, you know, priest uh, Moses over here. You know what I'm saying? prophet and you know then they changed them into Merlin and then they changed David into King Arthur so now you got Arthur you got Merlin and they kept flipping this is called you know like Yosef say typologies man typology phantoms and duplications those are authors of phantom of David the Preston you did Merlin is a phantom of Moshe, of Moshe wow. but they just gave they spin and they twist and their images to it So this is a, this exists. I'm breaking it down so you know drops not just popping off. You know what I'm saying? You know for for no beans. You know this is not you know nothing personal to nothing to nothing. You know what I'm saying? You know 
what is said got to be said. You know what I'm saying? What's right and what's real for monogas to have, you know, what we have, my heritage, someone got to speak up for. Or else it fades away into nothingness. It fades away into an amalgamation. But how is it nothing? That's when I'm reading it right here. Moses is king of Kush for 40 years. You think that's play play or just, are we talking Moshe? We're talking Khan Dawi, right? We're talking the press to Khan. If the press got a land, where is it? <laughs> You're talking about the emperor of the three Indians. You're telling me that's Wing Wang? If it's not Wing Wang, then someone got to speak up for it. You have order, not chaos. You have order. Not just a bunch of things popping off independently. You have order. You forgot. But you got one foundation. You got one shepherd, my not. That's Kandawi. And there's a strong correlation between the David flow and the Moshe flow. And you put them together and you have this, you know, fantastic, you know what I'm saying, figure that pops up under all these Presta John, you know what I'm saying, what they call mythological worlds and Shambhalas and all that stuff, you know. You have a king who's reigning on different realms and, you know, controlling the, the vortexes, the, the flow of the Nile, like the magical rings and the magical mirror that appears to be like a Khan David and a Moshe character merged into what? A priest and a king. But it's all David. <laughs> and it's all Moshe. You know what I'm saying? And it's all happening with Joshua. Who's, you know, all connected. You know what I'm saying? So now he got the power. It says Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel listened to him. Hearkened to him. And did as Hawa commanded Moses. And there, there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses. So are we talking Moshe? Are we talking real or fake? If we're talking real, then these Nagas, who are the Meshikans, they have a land, man. They have a country of their very own. I think Hawaii would do that for them. I think we should all do it for them. We should all do it for the Meshikans. The Meshikans. The She, my Naga. We should all do it for the She. Because the she is the Tao. If you don't know the Tao, then you don't understand the target, good or bad. Is the target good or the target bad? Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 15, target good. All the rest through 68, target bad. Which one you choose? Tao could be life or death. We're talking Tao, we're talking she, we're talking Messiah Khans. We're talking Moshe, Meshi, Moshe. Moshe laid his hands on Hawashua. Joshua. But there was never a prophet like Moses. Because Hawa knew him face to face and all the signs and wonders which Hawa sent him to do in the land of Egypt. To Pharaoh and to his all his servants into all his land and in all the mighty hands and in all the great terror which Moses wrought in the sight of all Israel and Moses they were scared of Moses right you read all kind of books and stuff so you're talking to super figures superheroes right but later they would call them gods and rewrite the stories and they would venerate these characters, you know what I'm saying? You know, he'll turn into a god of this. And you read about him and they'll say, the god such and such. And you don't know they're just talking about Moses. The people ain't saying God. The translators are saying God. But okay, man, so. Let's go to Joshua, man. We're in Joshua. Let's go to Joshua. 
Go to chapter three. Wow, wow. Can we get some land from Monagas, man? When we talk indigenous, and it's got to be said because, you know, it's a whole community, you know what I'm saying, on some other, you know, interference path, you know. And there has to be order when it comes to the wave. You can't take it out of perspective. We can't suddenly be, you know, a, a small, you know, small uh, dot on your... <laughs> On your grand vision board, you know, where, oh, yeah, the Israel somewhere, Judah somewhere, you know. But other than that, it's the uh, Shaka Shaka tribe and the Asha Asha tribe and the tribe, tribe, tribe. And all this love for these tribes and ain't no one talking Israel, man. All this love for these tribes and ain't no one talking the code. What happened? All this love for the tribe and ain't no one. Talking about unifying the tribe. You can't unify the tribe if they just, you know, keep going under all these other situations, man. You got to unify the tribe and let them know that they connect to a code. And with a code, you can have unity. Now, the code has to be clear. When we talk Moshe, it has to be clear. We're talking indigenous. <laughs> all right? When I talk Moshe, I'm talking Meshi, she. Like the Almec, right? The Shi, the Tangu, the Shia dynasty that was attacked by Genghis Khan. Just like Presley John and Karakata. And now I'm talking Cathay. When I talk indigenous America, I'm talking Cathay. I know it's two different perspectives. But the indigenous perspective on one end could only go back so far if you're just thinking about recent Indian history, right? Or what's been given to us. Managa, if you keep going, then you get into a whole other world. You get into the so-called Mongol history, right? You get into battles with Genghis Khan. You get into battles with Davids. You get into the whole empire popping off all throughout Tenochtitlan, all the way up, Enoch City, all the stuff popping down. You know, popping up, popping down. Popping up and popping down, man. You know what I mean? So we're right now firming ourselves you know taking a nice firm stance on reality you know we're not here to kick nobody's house over but if you're gonna rock in your house at least know where you at it's just respect it's paying true homage to who Hawa said you know should get this honor as the one and only shepherd we ain't talking David for no reason we're talking Hosea 3 that we will search and seek Hawa, which means we keep the code. And after we get in code, we we get on our press to flow. We start searching for the priest king, but not the priest queens, but not. That's going to tell us a different history than the so-called indigenous Indian history. That's going to take you somewhere where genealogy can't touch your mongrel history. Wow. <laughs> it's going to take you further. And it's not about proving yourselves. We don't have to prove ourselves. The truth is a frequency. You know the flow. You know what it feels like. You know what it feels like when someone's telling you the truth. You know what this is. <laughs> the real Nagas that got completely damn near exterminated. We supposed to have a bunch of paperwork to prove who we are today to who? Who we got to prove ourselves to? I think the only people we got to prove ourselves to is ourselves. And the way we do it is by keeping the code and being unified. Blue, purple, red, white, and linen, gold thread. But let's stop with the funny business. You know what I'm saying? When I talk indigenous, I'm talking Joshua, huh? which is Kitsukoodle. We're talking Israel the fourth, Israel the third, the tall tax monogamy. Back to King Solomon. Who's that? This is reality happening here. The Marcon Kalelu's empire is reality. Aquatai got the drop, man. Dropping them literal body bags, man. You know what I'm saying? Because there are bodies after bodies after bodies that's being accounted for. Hundreds of bodies popping out of Arizona, man. 
Hundreds of bodies, man. That no one could claim. It's like, hey, anybody want to claim these guys? Come on, they dating them back to 200 AD. That's pre-so-called Indian history. That has nothing to do with anything you ever had in your mind about an Indian, man. You're talking about a kingdom. You're talking about an empire. And that, if you're looking for a restoration, that is the vision. <laughs> That's the only vision of wild guy is restoring his seed, restoring his children with their birthright, with their inheritance. I mean, what you want? If you ain't on that wave, what you want? You want to be, you know, in the matrix, man? Or you want real salvation, which means you're rocking with the cons, man. <laughs> Straight up. You're rocking with the wave. You're rocking with the cons. We're talking about Joshua, right? So, you know, Joshua got that, uh, you know, that charge up from Moshe. He laid his hands on Joshua 3. And Joshua rose up early in the morning and they removed from Shittah and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and they lodged there before they passed over. Hey, man, happy Passover, Baruch Pesach, man, we popping off, man. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the midst of the camp, and they commanded the people, saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of Hawaii, your power, and the priest, the Levites, bearing it, you shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, and two thousand cubits by measure come not near upon it, that you may know the way that by which you must go. For you have not passed this way here to before, heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow Hawaii will do wonders among you. Sound just like who? Sound like you know what I'm saying? Sound like Unk, right? <laughs> Sound like Moshe. You know, so Joshua's having his Moshe moment, man. He's like, hey, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. Hawaii will do wonders among you. And Joshua spoke to the priest saying, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on before the people. And they took the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. And Hawa said to Joshua, so this is Hawa speaking directly to priest King Joshua, right? The one you want to forget about today. No, no, no giving praises to this Joshua who's speaking directly with Hawa. There ain't not one script in the New Testament saying Hawa said. Hawa said to Jesus. And if it says God, they ain't talking about this God. They're talking about a new tomb. Because the New Test has a new God. Now Jesus is God, right? You know what I mean? New God. But there's a different Joshua who's doing amazing miracles here. Let's pay attention because first Moses, whose life force was never taken away, never abated, right? Eyes were never dim. Passes on some supercharged energy, sci-fi styles, <laughs> I mean... Charges up Joshua. Now Joshua say, man, Hawaii's about to do amazing miracles here, man. Hawaii will do wonders among you. Verse 7. Hawaii said unto Joshua, this day I will begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that I, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you are come to the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the, in the Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come here and hear the words of Hawa, your power. And Joshua said, Hereby you shall know that the living Hawa is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites of today, this will be all the hijack. All the hijack. You'll be calling them out by name. Canaanite, Hittite, Hivite, Perizzite, Girgashite, and more, right? Jebusite. So this is 
Don't get it twisted. These are people that look just like you. All these ites look just like you. All right. <laughs> Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of Hawah of all the earth passes on before you over the Jordan. Now, therefore, take you 12 men out of the tribes of Israel for every tribe of man. Joshua gets 12 disciples. Every tribe gives a man, right? Twelve, twelve disciples, right? <laughs> and it shall come to pass when the sole of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the of Hawah, the power of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, even the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand in one heap. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over the Jordan, the priests that bore the ark of the covenant being before the people and when they that bore the ark, ark were coming to the Jordan and the feet of the priests that bore the ark were dipped into the brink of the water for the Jordan overflowed all its banks all the time at the time of harvest that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up in one heap a great way off from Adam the city that is beside Zarathon so these enormous waterfalls that normally come down, it says the waters which came down from above stood and rose up. Did Jesus ever do anything like this? I'll wait. Turn water to wine, walked on water. Hey, King David walked on water. You know, We got that out to Benjamin to do. <laughs> Get that Benjamin of the doula. Go get go on the YouTube. Just type in King David walked on water. You know, con drop. Hey, King David walked on water, man. Press the John. Moshe. <laughs> Joshua just stopped the waterfalls. What else? The waters rose up in one heap, a great way off of Adon, and those that went down toward the Sea of Arabah. Even the salt sea were wholly cut off. Sound like that salt lake, huh? Sound like that Udall flow. We just talking Moab, right? And the people passed over right against Jericho. Wow. And the people passed over. Hey, Amen. Baruch Pesach, man. And the priest that bore the Ark of the Covenant of Hawah stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. Did JC ever do anything like this? This is when you got command of the elements. Not some lesser magic. Water to wine. I'm talking about parting the waters with the Ark of the Covenant. I don't think JC ever got near the Ark of the Covenant, man. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure, man. Don't take my word for it. I don't know, man. Go. Go recon it, man. Did JC ever take a walk with the Ark of the Covenant, man? <laughs> Let's get it right here. Joshua chapter 10, making our dismount. I'm talking the land. And as I read this, you know, just keep your mind meditated on our land, promised land, America, and why it's so important for us to, you know, continue to put that reminder out. You know what I'm saying? That we are here. We're not just some, you know, admixture of something. And, you know, we're, we're this, but we're also that, but we're also that, you know. We know we come in all, you know, different, you know, frames and shapes. You know what I'm saying? We understand all that, but we also know, you know, what it really looked like. You know what I'm saying? No matter how far we get from that, we know what it really looked like. And that that is uh, represented every everywhere we look when we walk through our neighborhoods, our neighborhoods. So let's not, you know, start tripping. You know what I'm saying? Let's stop tripping. We know who we are. And these people, these so-called black people, we have a land and a country of our very own. And not just that, the whole, you know, the whole connection, my Nagi truly is your 
it's order over chaos. You know what I'm saying? When Hawa puts his seed down, he puts you down to be the head, not the tail. So, you know, we can get that script. You know, you already know. Deuteronomy, you're the head, not the tail when you're in order. So as you get back in order and you're the head, everyone wants to look at you crazy now because you're, you're saying you're the head. Now you're some type of supremacist. <laughs> what happened to us? Somebody else said they were the head. And then we pop off, we say we the head. Our reality don't have to be your reality. Our peace definitely ain't your peace. So don't look at us crazy for saying we have an empire. We're the head. <laughs> Talk to Hawa. Or you could be out of order with the creator and you could deal with it. It's been, you know, dealt with before. That's easy work. That's light work. Or you can go with the wave, you know what I mean? Go with the Shalom and, you know, give all praise to the creator for, you know, waking you up, man. Allowing you to see clearly, to make those changes, to keep the code. And at that point, man, it's, it's tribe or nothing. You know, you a code keeper, you tribe. It ain't even about no appearance or nothing, you know what I mean? But that doesn't take away from the point of why we are popping off, man. We're doing it for the indigenous or original Amaru Khan. And there can't be no confusion about who that is and who represents that to this day. Because it ain't been that long. The invasion ain't that long ago, my naga. Chickamauga. Chickamauga, Chickamauga. And ain't no one talking Chickamauga until we start popping off Chickamauga. So don't start claiming the Chickamauga suddenly. You know who these she are, man. That was the last link we needed to realize how recent this invasion was for the she. That the Almec was just getting taken down. That all these heads you see buried is probably them just trying to hide the evidence. Hide the evidence. <laughs> trying to bury the heads, man. Why would the people build a beautiful, you know what I'm saying, uh, expression of themselves and then bury it? You know what I'm saying? Someone's going to take all that effort. They want to show you something. They're, they're showing you whose it is, who it belongs to. Land rights, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? What we don't know, we don't know. But we do know what we're looking at when we look at these knots. That we're looking at Uncle Nuck Nuck in there. You know what I'm saying? That we know what we're looking at. So we're gaining it all back. Why? Because we're looking at it through the Moshe point of view. That 360 dragonfly. The Joshua flow. Let's get it. So Joshua just made the waters part with that Ark of the Covenant technologies. Joshua just made the waterfalls, you know, reverse and just sprout up in the other direction. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's Joshua going to do now? Let's go, man. Verse 8, chapter uh, 10 in Joshua. And Hawaii said unto Joshua, fear them not, for I have delivered them into your hand. So he's over there going up to war, you know, uh... Let's go back so we know exactly who Joshua was beefing with right here. Now it came to pass in verse 1 when Adana, Adana Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard about how Joshua had taken Ai, Ai and had utterly destroyed it and as he had done to Jericho and her king. So Joshua was going from king to kingdom, slicing and dicing. Why, my nagging? For land that is not going to belong to his people. To say that these Negroes don't have a land of their own. <laughs> that they don't have to share with nobody if they don't want to. Because it's just theirs. It's like saying, I have a house of my own. And I want to be in it. I don't want to have no parties over here. I just want to chill. I have a house of my own. You're going to have to respect that. You're going to have to say, oh, that's his boundaries. That's his place of study. You know, I'm not going to bother him there. But I say, if I'm over here, it's public space, common space. Holla at me. What's up? You know what I'm saying? You got a house. You got a bedroom, right? You could have a house party. But in your bedroom, that's a sacred place, right? Hawaii has a whole earth plane. 
But then there's a bedroom. There's a sacred place. And that sacred place is for his family. And you're in it. <laughs> and that's what we're trying to tell you. It's not about Indian or indigenous. It's about who are you. And if you're talking about rocking in our sacred place. Then you come with humility. Respect. And you do it for a while. And you're keeping the code. You're not just amalgamating your way. Finding a scholastic way to connect here. It don't go like that. Your ancestors wouldn't have done that to the priest con. We know how bad everyone wants to pop off. We know how bad everybody wants to be in the flow. Because there's, there's only the wave, my life. Look around, man. Look around, man. There's only the way. No matter who you are, there's only the way. This wave continues with or without all of us. You know, it's, it's, it's popping off with or without you, with or without me. That's what's beautiful about the wave. It's not like drops just popping us off. It's happening. I'm just surfing it, man. Teaching my nagas how to surf it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hawaii style, you know? It's not my wave. We're just surfing the way. But we will claim, you know what I'm saying, the frequency, you know, that is our source. We do claim our superior men. We do claim our breadth of security. Wow. We are going to claim us, you know. At some point, we do have to claim ourselves. Just like Joshua has been claiming his land, going from Jericho to Ai. As he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gideon, of Gibeon, had made peace with Israel and were among them, and they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city, as one of the royal cities, because it was greater than Ai, and all the men thereof were mighty. Wherefore Adani Zedek, king of Jerusalem, went into unto Hoham, king of Hebron. And into Paran, king of Jarmuth, and unto Japhia, king of Lachish, and unto Debir, king of Eglon, saying, Come unto me and help me, and let us smite Gibeon, for it has made peace with Joshua. They were a confederacy, my God. They were confederate against the Kapakans, specifically the tribes of Israel. It's not mythology. It's what happened here. It's what these ruins are about. It's what these artifacts are about. You can't ignore them to paint an Indian picture. No. We don't do that to our ancestors, man. They got bodies, man. You got to you have to respect our ancestors. You have to give them their own promised land. What do you think Joshua is fighting for? Come unto me and help me and let us smite Gibeon, for it has made a peace with Joshua and the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the kings of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmo, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and camped against Gibeon and made war with it. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp of Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hands from thy servants. Come to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the hill country are gathered together against us. So this is why Joshua went head up. He ain't just picking on people. Joshua ain't just saying, hmm, who's next? Who's next? He's minding his own business. <laughs> This confederacy comes, they mad at Gibeon because he made peace with Joshua. And then Gibeon said, yo, these people going crazy. They all the way up. Joshua said, all right. <laughs> you already know, though. That's what I've been waiting for. That's what I do. <laughs> you know that's how he's feeling about this. Let's go. Verse 8. 
And Noah said to Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into your hand. And shall not a man of them stand against me, against thee? Joshua therefore came upon them suddenly, for he went up against Gilgal all night, and Hawa discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter. Hawa fights with Israel, don't you get it? That's why they fear you. It's not just your blackness. It's that Hawa rocks with you. The creator fights for you. The dragon energy, the fire, the water, the elements, the ether, the earth plane, like Khalifa style, the earth fights with her. They have to put a spell on the earth and you to get a fair one. <laughs> Because without that, everything rocks with you. Specifically, as a tribe, based on a certain blessing that was passed, you know, from Hawa, man. And we've seen the evidence. What are we talking, Joshua, David, and all the fantasy, they say, you know what I'm saying? With this king of Shambhala and all this stuff. All this connection with the Genghis Khan takeover. And yet Genghis Khan had magic of his own, man. So... It's a magical realm, this place that you're in. You know, you're going to have to accept the avatar flow. Where the trees were trees. That's what I'm talking about. With When the trees were trees. <laughs> when the trees were trees, the Naga had a land. No one took their genealogy to avatar. You know what I'm saying? That will be disrespectful. The trees were the trees. The trees got a land. Again, do your genealogies, man. Go crazy. You know what I'm saying? But just know, you got right now, this is the ancient love song. And you can't stop at how, you know, ancient you get. You can't try to measure away your antiquity. You're going to have to connect to what it is. Why is there Hebrew writing on these Decalogue stones, right? Why is the Ten Commandments or Nine Spiral Up Commandments? You know what I'm saying? Why? Are they already written in Paleo-Hebrew in America? Why do the Hebrews, you know what I'm saying, seem to have an imprint all over the place here? Why do we know that these people are that people? The judgment thing comes from, am I going to do it for them or prove that other people look like them too? If you take the road of proving like trying to prove other people look like the so-called Negro and probably are the same tribes of Israel. How? You never said that they're Negro. These people never claim to be Negro, Black, African American. Been a part of the community like that. <laughs> but suddenly because we say tribes of Israel, then now we're just one tribe. And yep. We look like this. You look like that too. See, see, we're all this. Because we say Indian, then we're all just supposed to be the same thing suddenly. Because we say Khan, how we all the same thing. If I say Naga, yep, we all the same thing. If I say black man, everyone back up and say, no, 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 no. Because now you know who I'm talking to. Who the suffering and the struggle has primarily been targeted and been against, man. These black men and black women, these are these tribes that we're reading about with Joshua. These are these tribes. These are these people. This is promised land. These are special nagas in these hoods, in these ghettos. These are them. These are the children. You're going to have to back up. You're going to have to give them some space. Let them get them shit, <laughs> get themselves together. You know what I mean? Let them collect before you try to amalgamate into them. Let them, you know, wake up. Help them. Don't confuse a naga now. Help a naga now. Tell a naga, this belongs to you. This is you. And the naga will love you because you're telling the truth. We're talking about the tribes of Israel. We're talking about the tribes of Jacob, my naga. Who do you think all these pieces and treaties and friendships is, is all about? Tribes that are confederate against these tribes for the dismount
Verse 12, then Joshua, then spoke Joshua to Hawa in that day when Hawa delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand, son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. Sun stand still, moon stand still. And the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the nation had avenged themselves of their wow. enemies. This is greater magic than what this JC is supposed to be pulling off in the new test with water to wine and walking on water and healing some sick people. Come on, man. He's commanding the sun and the moon to change their course so he could finish a war. He's parting the Jordan River <laughs> so the people are passing on dry land. He's pushing back the waterfalls, my not. And then he does what? Divides the land for Israel, right? When we say our land, my naga, we mean our land, man. It's nothing racist about that. That shouldn't hurt nobody's feelings unless you were hijacked. And you thought our stuff was your stuff at some point in time. Someone got in your head, ball. So, yeah, their, their inheritance is yours, too. Someone gave you our inheritance. Did somebody mistakenly give you our inheritance? Should no one ever speak up for it? Because that's too sensitive of a topic. Makes people feel out of place. But not monogas. Monogas feel great. Monogas say, yeah, please discuss our inheritance. No one's really talking about it. It makes everyone uncomfortable. Now Joshua was old and well stricken in years. And Hawaii said to him, Thou art old and well stricken in years. And there remain yet very much land to be possessed. I got so much more land for you, my nage. That's what Hawaii is telling Joshua. Man, you still got so much more land to get. I got so much land for the tribe. What tribe? This is all about Israel. Is you here for Israel or not? Is you here for Yasharal or not? Or Hasharal to my bro Yosef? Are we here for the tribes or not? Or are you just here to claim? You're a clanger? It might hurt your feelings if you're a clanger. What we're saying about having something of our own, but you're a clanger. Like any relationship, you might have a girlfriend that cling on to you, you might be like, yo, you're clingy, I, I need some space, or a boyfriend who's clingy to my sisters, you know what I mean, so now we have Gentiles that's clingy, you know what I'm saying, now we got other tribes that's clingy, that's okay, I know it, it's the wave, we the wave but don't be so clingy that you don't respect our our, our house <laughs> our bedroom our bathroom, you know what I mean? Let us have some stuff. Let us be a nation. That's all we're saying. Is we, we black folk are an actual nation of people. You know what I'm saying? We're not just, you know, I get it. You know, black, uh, you know, puts us in a black hole. But the reason why most of y'all are thinking that is because you're a particular tribe who this genocide was done to. This is psychological genocide, man. To wake up and say, suddenly you have no land because anyone could do some ancestry trace back to some point in your land. So it belongs to them by default. Again, we got dog headed tribes. We got all kinds of amalgamations popping off. They have no more right to an indigenous title than anybody else that's trying to take it from that. Who's the land being delivered to and who's the land being delivered to? Kawas telling Joshua right here, man. There's so much more land, yet this is this is land that yet remains. All the regions of the Philistines, that's the land for Israel. All the lands of the Gersherites for Israel, for the Shehor, which is before Egypt. All that is for Israel, even unto the border of Ekron northward, which is counted to the Canaanites. Nah. That's for my seed. This is what the creator say. You want to forget it now? Is this allegory? 
Or do we have order? And we ask it about our lot. And we look up and suddenly we don't have a lot. <laughs> we don't even have nothing of our very own. Because America is just the old world, which is just an amalgamation, a melting pot of all these different tribes. And they all have a claim here. That's not how it goes in the old school. Let's kick things back to the old school. Because I ain't trying to be no old fool. You know what I'm saying? We rocking with the real ones, man. These are melanated tribes having melanated wars more and more. That's what it was looking like. Let's go for the dismount. From Shahor, which is before Egypt, up to the border of Ekron northward, which is counted to the Canaanites, the five lords of the Philistines, the Gazites, the Ashdodites, the Ashkelonites, the Gittites, the Ekronites, the Avrim on the south and all the land of the Canaanites and Marah that belongs to the Zidians upon Ephik, Afak, to the border of the Amorites and the land of the Gabalites and all of Lebanon toward the sun rising from Balal, Balgad under the Mount Hermon unto the, unto the entrance of Hamath, all the inhabitants of the hill country from Lebanon to Myth. Parat Mayam, Mayim, even unto the Zidion, Zidians, or Zo Zidonians, them will I drive out from before the children of Israel. Only a lot, only a lot thou it unto Israel for an inheritance. So only is this going to be unto the children of Israel for an inheritance, as I've commanded you. Now therefore divide this land for an inheritance unto the nine tribes and the half tribe Manasseh with him with the Reubenites and the Gadites receive their inheritance which Moses gave them beyond the Jordan eastward even as Moses the servant of Hawah gave them from Eror that is on the edge of the valley of Arnon which is Aniyam Anage. So when we talk Antioch, Kavira, we right in the middle of the thick of things, of the dividing and the boundaries of the land. And these Nagas got a land, and you got to deal with it, man. All you hijacks back, back. Let these Nagas have their Arna, their Antioch, my Naga, their kingdoms, their empires of America. This ain't no Indian stuff, man. This is an ancient, old world technology, an ancient flow. That's all about the regals and the royals, man. This is all about the originals. Only into the tribe of Levi he gave no inheritance. The offspring of Hawa, Hawa of Israel made by fire are his inheritance. And he spoke unto them. And as he spoke unto them, and Moses gave unto the tribe of the children of Reuben, according to their families, Managa, this is all about your families. These are the inherit inheritances which Moses distributed in the plains of Moab, beyond the Jordan at Jericho eastward, but unto the tribe of Levi, Moses gave no inheritance. Hawa, the God of Israel, the powwow, is their inheritance as he spoke unto them, which means you got access to the vortexes, to the rims, Beyond this earth plane. That's what that means. You got a lot. <laughs> you got a lot, you know, and a whole nother, you know, lot. You got a lot and a whole nother lot. And that's your pot, man. We just uh, talking about the regal cons, the inheritance, the land, my naga, the rights. So no one's going to squander our rights. Our right to be a free people, a sovereign people, a people that's able to separate and be by ourselves and be in code. And if you're rocking with us, it means you're rocking in the cold, not the other way around. Wakey, wakey, my knockers. A hop to the real ones. Allah, Hawa. Wow.
Wow.